We begin with the coronavirus death toll in New York State, which has now surpassed 10,000 people. 671 New Yorkers died on Sunday, which is about 100 less than the day before. The state continues to edge closer to 200,000 virus cases as the dizzying death rate and hospitalizations trend downward. Governor Andrew Cuomo says the worst of this nightmare might be over, but will never be forgotten. 2,700 lives were lost in 9-11, and 9-11 changed every New Yorker who was in a position to appreciate on that day what happened. And the number of lives lost, uh, lives lost was horrific after 9-11. And the grief was horrific. And we are at 10,000 deaths. We can control the spread. Feel good about that. The worst is over. Yeah, if we continue to be smart going forward, because remember, we have the hand on that valve. You turn that valve too fast, you'll see that number jump right back. We're going to be talking to Governor Cuomo uh, in, in a little bit this morning. Uh, but, Willie, uh, these, these, these counts are wildly inaccurate. Um, you had Dr. Gottlieb uh, tell Rich Lowry that our numbers are just as inaccurate as China's, maybe less so, because... Uh, we don't have community-wide testing. So the numbers are wildly low when you look at the infections. But from what I've heard talking to health care officials, talking to New Yorkers, talking to reporters on this story, they all say the same thing. The death count is also dramatically uh, under undercounted because so many people are just dying in their homes that never get to the hospital that don't want to go into the hospital. And we will never know. People can't get tested. We, we will never know uh, how, how many people uh, uh, are dying and have died from this disease. Without question, talk to any doctor in any city and they will tell you exactly what you just said, Joe, which is that, first of all, you and I both know people who've had it, but we didn't get tested either because they couldn't get a test or they didn't want to waste a test on themselves when they knew sitting in their homes that they had it and they just wrote it out. So we know without testing, the numbers are exponentially higher. And also, as you say, the number of deaths, people who've been told not to go to the hospital, people who can't go to the hospital because they weren't showing certain signs, stayed home and died at home. We know that's something that they're looking at in New York in terms of the total number of deaths. And until we have testing, nationwide testing, we will never know. We will never know how many people have this. We will never be able to begin to get our arms around it. And we are nowhere close, as the president boasts, about having the most raw number of tests in the world. Yes, two million or so. But in a country of 330 million people, we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of the extent of this problem. So talking about going back to work, when we have no idea who even has it in this country, only the number of people who've tested positive, and there aren't any aren't enough tests, that's not enough, and it won't be enough for a long time until we get testing. You know, uh, John Heilman, I don't know if as a young child you ever put your hand on a hot stove, but I can tell you, <laughs> For young children who did, who are, are, do you still do that? Perhaps you still do that. But I can oh, tell yeah. you. As, routinely, routinely. On my, yeah. In fact, that's why you're in the kitchen right now. Um, because you just do it during Correct. the breaks, just to make yourself feel alive. But anyway, as a young child who, who sticks their hand on a hot stove, um, most learn. That apparently is not the case with uh, some Trumpists in the media who are trying to hawk their books or want uh, people who are uh, a member of the most extreme elements of the Trump cult to go to their websites, whatever, because a lot of the mistakes that these Trump apologists were making throughout January and February and March, saying that this was all overrated and uh, the coverage was a hoax or who was saying it's just like a flu, they stopped saying that, right? Uh, but when suddenly people started dying the way they started to die, they they took their hand off the hot stove. We've been through a, a horrendous two or three weeks. Now some of them are starting mm -hmm. to put their hands on the hot stove again. Some of the very people I don't even mention their names because I don't I don't want to don't want to promote them. But they 
used to be important voices on the right. Some of them even worked in the Reagan administration. Now they're going back to the whole yarn that, oh, it's just the flu. It's just the flu. I wish that oh, all of these gosh. White House people and all of the Trump people that say it's just a flu, I'd love for them, if they really feel that way, to get all their family and all of their loved ones together. They can throw a huge party in a barn. They can invite a thousand other people and film it uh, if they really believe that. Of course, they're not going to do that. And I don't want them to do that because I actually care about whether Americans live or die from this coronavirus. Right. But it's hard for me, after all we've been through, to listen to somebody that used to have a shred of respect on the right say this is nothing more than the flu. And they're going back to that now. And they're starting to say, oh, see, look, it's not 2 million deaths. It's not 100,000 deaths. It's 60,000 deaths. Well, of course, that's right. the first wave. We don't know how many deaths will be. But this is not the flu. 25 people are dying right. here and, you know, veterans are getting wiped out there and 600 Navy uh, uh, shipmates uh, on, on the Roosevelt have it. This is a pandemic. And yet they keep going back for more. Some of them mm. on the same media outlets that got in trouble for lying to old people, to senior citizens, uh, to the infirmed the first time around. Right. It's sick and pathological, Joe. And, you know, we've seen it um, all throughout the Trump era, but the consequences were not as great as they are now. And I think it's one of the things that we have to really be concerned about right now, a combination of things. One of them is that, you know, if it, if it is the case that we end up with uh, the estimates turn out to be right, uh, that in this wave, at least, um, that we only end up with only, I say, only end up with 60,000 deaths instead of 100,000 deaths or 200,000 deaths. The, the missing link there is that the reason that, that will have happened is because of the extreme social distancing metri measures that were put in place. And so the, that's the lesson. The lesson is we right. shut the economy down. We shut down most of the states in the country. And it worked to flatten the curve in those right. places. Not that the virus wasn't as dangerous, as we said, but that we were able to affect it by taking these dramatic actions. But instead, some of the people you're talking about, and apparently it looks increasingly like the president of the United States, are going to say, hey, maybe this wasn't so bad after all. And now we can get yeah. back to get back to business. And, and that is going to be an incredibly dangerous scenario. We all agree that 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 Donald Trump does not have the the the, the power to open or close down the states, that those are states uh, within states authorities. But the reality is the president has enormous influence, especially with red state governors. And if those governors hear Donald Trump say, hey, it's time to open up for business, they're going to open up for business. And that could put at, at risk the lives of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Americans, because, of course, we do know we are all one country yeah. and it could hit those states harder, but it can affect all the other states, too. Absolutely. Well, and it could, Mika could not only put those people's lives at risk, and it will. It will. And as we as we heard yesterday, not just on the coasts, but in heartland America, where where for the most part in some rural communities, people are older and their health care systems are not as good because they, the funding has been gutted from Washington over the past five years. But Mika also, the second part of that is the economy. I'm scared to death for small business owners who were told, okay, now you can open up your store. Ugh. Then the second wave comes. That would be hard to survive. And they get hammered. I don't know a single doctor that doesn't say some second wave is coming in the fall. Right. We don't know how, we don't know how big it's going to be. Could be very bad. We have to prepare. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.